Hey folks, Eric here for the second time because I screwed that up the first time. Apparently I don't even know my own name. Anyway, it's Wednesday, which means it's a comics poll list video. So let's just dive right in in no particular order. This is just what's sitting here. Uh, so first of all, we have Batman Catwoman, number seven. From DC, it's Black Label, Tom King, Liam Sharp. Uh, I think this book is okay. Tom King has also been writing for Black Label, uh, Strange Adventures, and Rorschach. This falls in between. Uh, I really, really like Strange Adventures. Not sold on Rorschach. This kind of falls in the middle. And it has, uh, I think I went over this in my last one, because there might have been another issue from my big haul. Um, three different timelines pre-Batman and Catwoman being married, while they're married, and post-Batman's death, when Catwoman is widow. Uh, so, issue 7 of 12. Then we have, oh, another black label. This is The Nice House on the Lake, number 4, from DC. Black label, as I said. James Tinian IV, I believe, is what it is. This has been a really, really cool book. Uh, kind of a horror character study thing. Hard to describe, but definitely worth the read. Then we have another DC. This is from their horror line, The Conjuring, The Lover, uh, issue four. Where is my issue number? we got to be up to four by now, it seems like, oddly. Wait. There it is, yeah, number four. We're going to top my head instead of this really cool cover. This book's been okay. The backup story's been really good. The fake ad's been awesome. The main story seems to be dragging. But we'll see. Hopefully it'll have a good ending. Another from DC, Blue and Gold, number two of eight. Booster Gold, Blue Beetle, one of the greatest bromances in comics. Uh, good to see them together again. It's a fun book. Six Sidekicks of Trigger Keaton, issue four. This is from Image and Skybound. Uh, I like this fake New Yorker cover. This has been a lot of fun. Crazy book about a dead actor who was a complete douchebag and his sidekicks trying to figure out if he was murdered or not. A lot of fun. Defenders number two. This is Marvel. Um, yeah, Al Ewing is the writer. First issue was a lot of setup, I think. We meet our cast and figure out, find out what the threat is going to be. But it was fun, and I like the characters. Um, so there you go. Shang-Chi number four from Marvel again. This has been a fun book. I might be a little biased because I'm a huge, huge fan of Shang-Chi. I saw the movie last Thursday. I thought it was amazing. I actually want to go out and see it again. I have not seen like the same movie twice in theaters in decades probably, but I'm tempted. I don't know that I'm going to do it, but I'm very tempted. Uh, but this has been a good book. He's establishing himself as the head of his late father's crime family, but he's trying to, you know, turn it around so they're not a crime family anymore. A uh, crime organization, I should say, maybe. I don't know. Um, and he's kind of going up, butting heads against different heroes. Uh, so it was... Who was it in the first one? I don't think it was Cap. Was it Spider-Man, then Captain America, then Wolverine? Wolverine, excuse me. And now Fantastic Four. Um, so there you go. Another good book. Witch Blood from Vault Comics, issue six. This has been a pretty good book. I just grabbed the first issue randomly. It had a Dazzler homage cover, so I thought I'd pick it up. I'm enjoying it. It's got witches and vampires and other spooky things. Good stuff. Kazar, Lord of the, what is that? Savage Land, number one from Marvel. I'm a little scared. Um, I'm a huge fan of Kazar. He's like Marvel's version of Tarzan. Uh, 
But from the solicitation, it sounds like he might be getting superpowers, which is not something I want for Kazar. But we'll find out. We'll see how this is when I read it. The last book you'll ever read, number two. This is from Vault Comics, written by Cullen Bunn. First issue was fantastic, setting things up. This book that might be driving people crazy, driving them to murder, driving them to stuff. And the author, supposed to be going on a book tour, hires a guy as her bodyguard because people have been attacking her. Have no idea where it's going to go, but it, I'm, I'm there for the ride. Then we have Suicide Squad, Get Joker, number two. That's a fantastic cover. I absolutely love it. There's another black label. Again, let's find one of the other black label books. Two different sizes. I don't know why. Um, I haven't read the first issue of this yet. I'm way behind on my oversized black label books. So I can't tell you anything about it. But I like uh, Suicide Squad's pretty cool. Joker's pretty cool. So, hopefully it's good. Oh, and Brian Azzarella is the writer. Azzarello. Love that guy. All right, so that was it. Yes, that was it for this week. Now, last week I had them throw something in my file um, so I could pick it up this week. And that's Aquaman 80th Anniversary Edition. This is a square bound. This is from DC. And they've been doing this with their characters as they hit their 80th year. Uh, it's just like an anthology. It's got different Aquaman stories from different eras, 80 years worth of stories. They had eight different covers, maybe nine. Uh, I went with this one from sort of the Peter David era when he's got that hook for a hand. Um, I just read the Green Arrow one not long ago. I don't have all of these. I don't know why I haven't picked them all up. But I'm grabbing the characters I like, and I like Aquaman. There you go. Uh, let's see. I'll show you. Now, we'll save that for last. So, I claimed a couple of things. Now, this is Spider-Boy from Amalgam Comics, which is DC and Marvel. They had this big event where Marvel and DC clashed and their worlds amalgamated. And so, their characters became uh, smushed together. So, Dark Claw was the biggest one who was uh, Batman and Wolverine mushed together. Lobo the Duck was my favorite. My nephew has been picking up all of these. And uh, during these live videos that the comic book store does, sometimes you got to be quick. you got to claim it quick or someone else is going to get it. So as soon as this went up and I saw the price, it was nice and cheap, I claimed it. Then I texted my nephew to ask if he already had it, and he does. So now I have it. Uh, I think I read all of these when they first came out. I used to have them all. So I don't mind that I have it. Another claim. This one was straight up for me. Giant Size Spider-Man and Doc Savage. Hell yeah, I'm grabbing something with Doc Savage in it. This looks like a Gil Kane cover. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know, but either way, uh, this Doc Savage stuff doesn't get reprinted because of rights and all that stuff. Um... Like, there's a Marvel 2-in-1. I have the Marvel 2-in-1 Epic Collection. It does not have the issue that Doc Savage is in. I have that issue because my nephew got it for me. So I figured I'd grab this because it's got... I'm a huge Doc Savage fan. Uh, then something that I just kind of sort of claimed, I guess you'd say. It's brand new, so it wasn't really part of the show where you're claiming things. They were just showing it, and I said, hey... Make sure I get a copy of that. This uh, calendar. This is Basil somebody. I can't read the signature. So, Basil Gogos, 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 G-O-G-O-S. Um, he did a lot of covers for, like, famous monsters of film land and stuff. And so, there are no holes. Maybe they're trying to save it. But there's no holes. I don't know how I'm going to hang this up. But anyway. Oh, different picture on the back. It's pretty cool. Love the artwork. Ooh, the mummy. That's a nice one. I'm a big fan of the mummy. Old school. 
Let's pick another random one. We'll just go right there. I don't know what it's going to be. Ooh, Phantom of the Opera. So, grab that. And then finally, something I had them set aside for me. Uh, so it wouldn't disappear. They may have multiple copies. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is coming out of the box. Uh, there's an author that I know, uh, vaguely, who, uh, he was just on an episode, well, no, I just listened to an episode of the Ghoulish podcast that he was on. I'm way behind, so it's months old. Um, and his episode, Armand Rosamilia, hopefully I'm saying his name correctly, he was talking about Funko Pops, and it drives him insane when people take them out of the box. But I'm going to do it anyway. Anyway, it's a uh, dino pool. There, there's... You can see what it looks like, because you're getting a reflection there. Dino pool. Hell yeah, I was going to get that. And that's it. Uh, so everything that was pulled for me this week, plus some extra goodies as usual. Um, so there you have it. My question for the week is, let's go with this. I don't think I've asked anybody this. What do you think of Funko Pops? Do you like them? Do you buy them? If you do buy them, do you take them out of the box? I do not have a single Funko Pop in the box, except this one, because I haven't taken it out yet. Everything else Funko Pops everywhere, unboxed. Most of the boxes thrown away. Um, so, yeah. Are you into Funko Pops? Should they stay in the box? Do you take them out? Or do you not care? Do you think they're silly? Max Booth, not a big fan of Funko Pops. There's a guy that reviews fantasy and sci-fi books that I watch on YouTube. He hates Funko Pops. Um, don't know why. I mean, I can understand, hey, it's not my thing, but why would you actively, like, hate them? That's crazy. So that's my question. Let's talk Funko Pops. Um, and I did I did buy one other thing, but it is a gift for somebody. And I doubt that they will ever watch this video. But just in case, on that off chance, I'm not going to show you what it is. Um, maybe once I've... Once the person has received it, I have to mail it, then I will, I can tell you what it is. Maybe I'll even uh, take a picture of it before I send, and then I can show you. But, um, yeah, got a gift for someone, and I got to mail it to New York. That's it. That's all I got. Um, so, if you have any comments, questions, corrections, please put them in the comments below. Comments are open for spoilers. Just post spoiler warning. We try to be polite here on my channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you care to follow me on other social media, my Twitter is at Ronin5757. My Instagram, where I post pictures of books, comic books, board games, and fuzzy animals, is ericsmith5757. That's Eric with a K, E-R-I-K-S-M-I-T-H-5757. That's all I've got for you this week. So until next time, read more books.